Uh, hi, Gary. Um, thanks for agreeing to spend uh, uh, half an hour of your life uh, having a little chat with me. Um, all right. Uh, first of all, maybe we can ask, uh, maybe I can ask just, <coughs> uh, where are you, where do you live, <coughs> um, where are we talking to you from today? I'm uh, sitting in the dark in uh, Alaska, just north of the town of Anchorage. Hopefully the sun will come up in another hour or two. It's uh, about, what, 7.30 a.m. here and still dark. All right. <laughs> Um, so you could say I'm in the dark as usual. <laughs> right, and I'm coming from sunny South Africa where we've got uh, 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 14 hours of sunlight a day plus. Uh, I hope you're not too jealous. <laughs> I'm sorry for you, that must be <laughs> So um, I wanted to, to have this chat to you today really just to um, sort of capture on uh, uh, for, in, for perpetuity a little bit of the history of the quantum GIS, or QGIS, as I'll call it from now on. You, you, other people call it QGIS. Um, the QGIS project, uh, and just to sort of hear from the horse's mouth um, how you started it and uh, uh, what your motivations were and so on. And um, so uh, I'll sort of, I guess I'll dive right in by asking um, when, when you, uh, way back, I think it was 2002, when you started off, um, what was the actual um, impetus behind you starting uh, the project and what, what was the story that led you, uh, led you to start it? Um, well, in, in my uh, real job and in my own time, I'd done a lot of uh, GUI programming with the uh, Qt, I think as uh, the official name is, or Qt as most uh, Americans call it, C++ toolkit. And I had been using that way before uh, actually the KDE project even started. I remember the email that announced uh, the ambitions of the KDE project. So I had a background in that and I was actually using the toolkit in some work I was doing in my day job, uh, rendering uh, line data. And so I thought, Oh, well, this is kind of nice, I, you know, and I really would like to uh, to see some data from uh, PostGIS. I'd done a lot of work with proprietary spatial databases, and and there wasn't anything that I could find on Linux that would allow me to visualize my spatial data in PostGIS or PostGIS. So that was sort of the uh, the uh, bug that got me going, and on a, a weekend to to sit down and fiddle around a bit and see if I could get some data on the screen. So I didn't start out with any grandiose plan to uh, conquer the world with an open source GIS. All right. And um, and so you you were um, targeting Linux specifically. Were you um, a sort of a norm, uh, were you using Linux for your daily work or is it more a hobby at home to use it? I was I was using um, well, actually, I was on AIX in my day job, All but right. Linux at home, and uh, I I uh, looked around at, at the other toolkits that were available. I wanted to do something cross-platform because I thought, you know, maybe someday I might want to compile this on some other platform, and so that was why I went with the uh, QT framework. Right, right. And um, the decision to release it as an as, um, open source project, um, what what was what drove you to do that? You didn't have s some idea to commercialize your work or something like this. No, I I thought the fame and glory would be enough. Uh, no, actually, <laughs> I you know I was looking for. I thought it was kind of an interesting thing. There wasn't anything quite like it out there. Um, there were some folks that said, "Why are you starting a, a another open source GIS project? Why don't you work on this or that?" But uh, I thought it was a bit unique, and uh, I thought, well, I'll throw it out there and let people take a look at it, and uh, hopefully, maybe generate some interest to to make it better. Did you keep any? Um, I think you you put it out on um, uh, uh, what was the website that you you announced it on? Um, uh, uh, it was it was on SourceForge, and I announced it on. Uh, the fresh meat. Fresh meat, yeah, that's right. Uh, did, website. You, did you get any stats of how many people were downloading it in those early versions? Uh, I think I did, and it wasn't many. In fact, I can remember the day when I, I set up the, the mailing list on SourceForge, and if I got 
and they email exciting and remarkable for quite a long time. <laughs> so the you know these things start out slow, uh, especially your feature set is I can draw lines from a single layer <laughs> on a screen with no user interface to do anything <laughs> else, pan or zoom. So that was pretty much what the first version looked like. Yeah, yeah. And um, so you, you started off um, focusing on um, post GIS. Um, what are the what are the sort of great enablers uh, for you to actually get the project off the ground? You've mentioned the Qt framework. Uh, are there any other sort of noteworthy um, software toolkits or um, uh, other things out there that that sort of helped you really get going, or were you doing everything from first principles? Well, I used to think that I had to write everything myself. Uh, it was cheating to use something else, but those days were long gone by 2002. So I started looking around for something I could use to support shape files initially. And uh, once the project was announced, that's when uh, Mr. Warmerdam contacted me and and said that uh, you know he hoped I would consider using the Google OGR framework for Quantum GIS and looking into that that was just a ticket and so that's a big part of the uh, of the uh, back end uh, for the um, handling of both raster and vector data you um, you still kept your own um, implementation for post GIS um, even though you adopted Google for and OGR for um, rendering was that just purely for performance reasons or or um, you didn't want to let go of the code you worked on or uh, you know, I had it done, and it and it sort of worked, and so I, I guess I just didn't look back. Mm. Uh, I I think it's been tweaked by a lot of other folks uh, uh, now, and it's uh, it works pretty well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so uh, um, so you started off and you put it out there on Fresh Meat, and you got a, a little bit of um, activity around the project. Can you sort of trace for us the timeline? Um, from your point of view, about uh, sort of uh, just to highlight the the big milestones in the project, things that really kind of um, stood out for you as important um, uh, uh, markers along the way uh, till the point that we've reached today. Well, one big milestone was when I had another developer join up, which was <laughs> about six months into the project. Who was that, Marco? So. Uh, Actually, I think it was uh, Steve Halas. Oh, yes. Yeah. I don't know if I pronounced his name properly. Uh, I'd have to look back. That's one of the things I'm doing is uh, for the annual report this year is documenting uh, a bit of the history of the project as well. And, and so I have mm -hmm. a, a spreadsheet somewhere that shows who came on when. Mm -hmm. uh, Marco shortly after that, and then, of course, you came on. Uh, one of the big game changers along the way was when we actually supported more than PostGIS. And then, of course, raster was a big thing. You have to have raster support in the GIS. And me not being much of a raster guy throughout my uh, GIS career was happy to have uh, other folks come on board to implement raster. Um, and then getting projection support into the uh, on-the-fly projection support, that was a big uh, milestone, as you well know. Uh, you and I both struggle with that until I quit and you uh, struggled with it more but uh, uh, that was that was another milestone and then you know there were a lot of good releases along the way just incrementally implementing features and uh, if you look at the history of um, QGIS committers I put on my blog here a while back you see a big jump in 2004 and I think that was related to uh, uh, an increased number of developers and also the fact that we had good vector and raster support. And then there's another jump in 2008 and that was right after uh, version 0.9 came out which had Python mm -hmm. support. And I think that really opened the floodgates to, to people uh, realizing what they could do with QGIS and developing plugins. We put that we had a C++ plugin framework in place for a long time but writing C++ uh, plugin is, is not quite as easy as Python. So once point nine was out and that Python support was there, we had a lot of people come on board with interest in the project and started developing all kinds of new uh, and uh, interesting plugins. Last, someone 
mentioned the other day, there's about 150 mm -hmm. Python plugins for QGIS and probably more out there in the wild that, that we may not even have seen yet. So mm -hmm. those were the big, uh, some of the big milestones. And of course, just each release keeps adding new features and uh, WMS support, WFS support. Uh, it just keeps going and going. Mm -hmm. And, and um, not not to harp on the negative, but have there been any things that you've considered to be setbacks or, or things that you think are wrong turns in the in the development of QGIS to date? Um, I don't know that we've had setbacks. At times we've had considerably slow progress. Um, one of the things that that we don't do well, and this is not. Uh, atypical for an open source project is we we don't address the mundane bugs and issues that that creep in mm. you know that's sort of a developers like to work on the cool and new and exciting stuff and, and those mundane sometimes hard to track bugs are not very interesting to deal with and so in that regard we're similar to almost every other project but I really don't know that we've had any major setbacks that have caused us to say oh we got to chuck this whole thing and, <laughs> and start over yeah yeah um so along the way um from from that uh, the time when you did the first release of QGIS what was it 0 0.0 what was the first version you put out there 0 0.002 or something like that um yeah um <clears throat> along the way you must have come to a realization that actually this project has now grown um sort of bigger than yourself and you um, for example don't know every bit of uh, the code anymore and you don't know all the people that are working on the project anymore and um, w w when did you uh, well, did you reach that point and w if, if you did when was that uh, I, I think it was probably uh, two or three years ago where I really realized that I don't know what's going on inside the code everywhere anymore and so uh, you know, it's it's impossible, at least for me, with my other distractions, to to keep up with it. The things are changing quickly. There's, like you said, a lot of players that I haven't even met. I I sort of recognize their names, but it just uh, it got to a point where it took on a life of its own, and uh, that's a good thing. Yeah. Um. So so now uh, we're we're sitting. Uh, I don't know how accurate our stats are, but I think. Um, um, I think 1.6 we had around 190,000 downloads so um, it's not an insubstantial user base anymore and um, okay that, that number might be inflated by people downloading the software multiple times it might also be an underestimate given the fact that people might share it um, around uh, that we don't know about um, what do you think of those numbers? Is, uh, are they a surprise for you? I mean, given your sort of humble beginnings with drawing lines on a, you know, from postures and what have <laughs> you, um, you know, do, do you, are you uh, surprised by them, or are you, uh, is it sort of um, uh, an obvious thing that that uh, there's just such a lacking for a good open source user friendly desktop application that um, uh, it, it seems obvious that people would be grabbing f for it with both hands. I, I think I was surprised when we got over 10,000 downloads, and I don't remember what version that was. So yeah, those numbers are, are kind of a, a bit surprising, but then given the way the uh, project has evolved and and uh, and the interest that's that I've seen increase over the years, you know, I don't I, those numbers are are good. I'm and yeah, I'm still a bit surprised, but I tend to think that that number underestimates the real user base hmm. because. Every now and then you'll come across another person, another organization, uh, an NGO, something that's using it in uh, dramatic ways that, that you had no idea they were using. So I think there are, there are a lot, probably a lot more than 190,000 users out there. And do you think there's, uh, there's room for that to grow a lot more? I mean, what is, where, is the, where is the limit of our user base is, um, in your mind? I think there's a, a room for a lot more growth. You know, there are a lot of people uh, that, especially in smaller organizations that have very expensive proprietary software licenses that expired two years ago or more because they just can't 
uh, afford to continue paying that price. And those people are really interested in a free solution. Mm -hmm. Now, we didn't set out to try to take over the world. And, uh, you know, that's not, I'm not an open source zealot. Uh, I'm more of a, a pragmatic type. So I think there's plenty of opportunity for more people, uh, even people who haven't used GIS before, to say, oh, look, here's a free program. You know, what is this? And maybe get a little bit of help and start being successful with it. Hmm. Um, are, there, are there things in the project that you think are still um, key, key features that we're really missing before we can really um, cater for the masses or... Um, is what we have good enough and we just really need to make it more robust? I think, uh, and this is being addressed, is I think the analysis side, you know, could use a bit of work, mm -hmm. the, the actual GIS analysis side of things. I think we made good progress on the cartography side. There may be some more improvements that can be done there. I mean, there's always improvements you can make, but I think the the, the basic set of features and capabilities we have are, are pretty solid. And in fact, uh, there are a lot of people that have ditched their uh, proprietary or, or even other open source GIS and in favor of using QGIS to do all their work. Is there is there any one thing in, in the current version or in the, the current state of the software which just bugs you and <laughs> wish you wish it wasn't like that or was done a different way? Um, not that I can think of. There's always little... Uh, uh, issues or, or nits here and there that you know you, you may want to to make a change to uh, it, particularly in the user face there's some inconsistencies here and there but no there's nothing that, that really stands out that, that bugs me mm. so um, I think next next year what February March will be uh, 10 years of of uh, the existence of QGIS. When did you start? It was it in the beginning of 2002? Yeah, it was February of 2002 February. I started writing code. Mm -hmm. So, um, which is um, actually quite a good um, quite a good run for, a, for an open source project. Um, I, I heard somebody um, went to a meeting with, with a proprietary vendor <laughs> representative the other day and they said, oh, they, they were interested in using QGIS and the person said, uh, we don't know, um, you know, th these these open source software things can disappear overnight. And uh, I guess after ten years, we we kind of can say, well, actually, we're here to stay. Um, what do you see in mm. your crystal ball for the next ten years? Where, what, where can we go over over the next ten years in your mind? Yeah, uh, that uh, that that fear, uncertainty, and doubt is uh, is typical uh, that you mentioned. Uh, the next ten years, I don't know. I you know, there's I think we can just continue to improve the uh, the all-around capabilities and uh, integrate new technologies that are coming up and support those. Uh, I don't see any end to the work, but I don't. I haven't really formulated a a master plan or vision either for the next ten years. Yeah, yeah. Not that I had one for the last ten years. <laughs> We're working on. Uh... The chaos approach to <laughs> software development. 